what's involved in the stem cell collection process. So patients need to get certain you know, blood tests done, get their hearts and lungs checked out through echocardiograms and, and lung function tests to kind of meet the basic requirements of going through a stem cell transplant. Once they've gone through that process and, you know, we have a thumbs up from their respective insurance companies as well, there's generally a central line place, you know, it's, it's usually an upper body central line, which will be utilized for the stem cell collection process. You know, in the old days of the bone marrow transplantation, we actually did go to the operating room and take a liter of your bone marrow. Uh, then we would do the chemotherapy and give you back your bone marrow, and we call that a bone marrow transplant. But actually now, the correct terminology is a hematopoietic stem cell transplant. And the reason for that is that we learned that we don't need the entire bone marrow to restore your bone marrow. We actually just need the stem cells to live in your bone marrow. And so we've learned how to stimulate those cells in the bone marrow with these drugs called growth factors or granulite colony stimulating factors or GCSF, also called Granix, also called Nupigen. These cells will actually lead to the, uh, the cells to divide uh, and eventually leave the bone marrow. And that may be sufficient to actually then start collecting the cells. But in many patients, if we want to collect, especially for two transplants, often that's not sufficient. And we give a second drug called Plerixophore, which actually basically removes the anchor of the stem cells in the bone marrow and allows them to float away into the blood. And so we're basically pushing the cells out into the, into the bloodstream so that we can then collect them through the, through the catheter and through the peripheral blood. Who administers the growth factor shots? So that actually depends on payer issues. It can be performed by the patient. It can be performed by a caregiver. It can be performed at a physician's office. And oftentimes this is related to reimbursements, uh, whether or not the Nupigen can be supplied to the patient directly or needs to be administered in the physician's office. When you have a certain sufficient number of uh, CD34 cells in the bloodstream and, and you've made calculations, that all right, if the CD34 counts get to this number, I would be able to collect this many amount of stem cells. That's when you bring patients in to the apheresis center, and that central line is hooked up to an apheresis machine, which functions very much like a hemodialysis machine. The actual collection process is performed on something called a pheresis machine, which is basically a machine where blood from the patient is removed, it's circulated through tubes without actually touching the machine, but through sterile tubes. Inside the machine, there's a centrifugation process where the white cells or the that contain the stem cell population are, are removed uh, and the blood is returned back to the patient. Then uh, that type of procedure typically takes three to four hours a day. And generally, patients can collect sufficient stem cells anywhere between one and five consecutive days of this type of phoresis procedure. So the blood flow goes through that machine, the machine plucks out the stem cells and stores them away in the bag. And then once that process is done, the stem cell processing lab processes those stem cells and freezes those bags for future use. And those stem cells can be used 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, given how the process is nowadays. Then we wait for another week or 10 days um, and patients are brought into either the hospital or in the outpatient setting to get high dose melphalan. And then a day later, they get parts of their stem cells or, you know, that have been collected back. So that's, that's, you know, how the whole process kind of flows. How many stem cells are collected? That is a very good question, and that's something that you should ask. Um, normally, there is a minimum number of stem cells that is required to restore your bone marrow function after a transplant. And that's usually about two million cells. Most of us like to give a little bit of a cushion in case not all of those cells are perfectly viable. So we tend to give at least three to five million cells. Uh, and that is for one transplant. Myeloma is the one disease where sometimes a second transplant is helpful, both uh, at following, immediately following the first transplant, and we call that tandem transplants, or perhaps in the future at a time of relapse. And so uh, for the most part, uh, you should be collecting for at least two transplants. Why might I be asked to chew Tums during my stem cell harvest? So when you are harvesting, as your blood is going through all this tubing and through all, the, you know, all through the machine and the collection process, you will actually uh, lose a lot of electrolytes 
calcium and magnesium and potassium. And so the, the pharesis nurses will be replacing you to prevent you from having, you know, cramping and sort of tetany and all these uncomfortable things that you can experience uh, because of the loss of those electrolytes. So Tums, of course, being giving you calcium back.